Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Chido and this is Chido Starts Up. If this is your first time joining us, thank you so much for coming through. Please make sure to click the subscribe button at the bottom of the page. And if you're joining us again, thank you so much. I'm so excited that you've decided to join us on another video. Today I'm going to be speaking more on the lines of productivity. I really value productivity because I enjoy getting involved in a lot of projects. So today I'm going to be speaking about how to manage your life like a business. This will be a two-part series, and in this part, I'm going to be speaking about the personal aspects of managing your life like a business. Then the next part, I'll be speaking about the financial aspects of managing your life like a business. So let's get right into it. There are many ways in which people can manage their lives. This is one of them, and if it works for you, then by all means, go for it. I like going this route because I enjoy business in general. It's something that I think about all the time. So I just thought that since I'm always thinking about business and I'm kind of living my life, why not merge the two and ensure that I'm kind of feeding two birds with one seed? Point number one, you need to understand your identifying factors. So all businesses have a name and most of us have names already. Businesses also have a logo. And for us, our logo is our signature. You need to know that you have a signature ready whenever you need to use it. You may need it for contracts, to apply for bank accounts, even passports and other documentation. But you just need to ensure that you have your signature ready. Let me take myself for example. I never really thought about a signature or even practiced it because I didn't really need it at the time. But then when I tried to apply for a bank account, they needed me to sign because now I was no longer a minor. My mom couldn't sign for me. So what happened then is that I thought of the first thing that came to my mind, which was a heart. And I incorporated a heart into my signature then. When I then decided what type of signature I wanted to have, I didn't want a heart anymore, but it became a bit difficult to change it. The institutions that had my heart signature weren't really willing to change it easily because it creates an opportunity for fraud and theft, identity theft at that. So I had to do a lot of convincing and quite a bit of paperwork in order to change it into the signature that I wanted to use. So I advise you that in order to avoid all of that mess, just Think about your signature, practice it, decide what type of signature you want to have and make sure that you use that the next time that you need to use a signature. Another identifying factor that I put alongside a logo is a stock picture. So this is a picture or a set of pictures that you use whenever someone asks you to upload a picture. A lot of applications ask you to upload a picture. There may also be times when newspapers or other publications may want to publish your work and put a picture of you so that people are able to identify you whenever they see you. So I advise that you take some time, you can even take your cell phone or a good camera and just take a few stock pictures of yourself. You can decide to look professional or not professional just depending on the type of image that you want to have. Remember, this is your identity and it must reflect you. It doesn't really necessarily need to reflect others' expectations of you, but as long as you're comfortable and you're happy using that stock picture, then go for it. Point two, you need to get your documents in order. Businesses are able to run efficiently and effectively because they have their documents in order. They have their registration documents, their shareholder certificates, their tax certificates, and some even have operating licenses for their various industries. In the same light, you also need to have your documents in order. And these are your birth certificate, your passport, your national identity document, and your driver's license. So some people may not feel like a driver's license is that necessary at the moment, but let me explain why it is. Some job applications require candidates with a driver's license. So they might need you to take over some driving duties from the driver that they have, or perhaps they might even have a company car that they give to employees after a certain period of time. You never really know why people ask for these things, but just having it helps you to be that candidate that has most of the qualifying factors for the job. Another reason why it is important to have a driver's license is because some applications and opportunities require you to have two or more forms of identity documents. So a passport and a national ID do help, but not all institutions accept a birth certificate. The reason why they don't accept birth certificates is because birth certificates usually don't have a picture of you on them. Even if they did, that picture was taken when you were a few weeks old and it's difficult for them to actually ascertain whether it is really you who was in that picture back then. Some can also use a birth certificate and steal it and steal your identity because again it doesn't have a picture and even if it does it could be any baby. So make sure you have your driver's license. It will help you as an additional form of an identification document and it can also help you secure some other opportunities which you may not have qualified for if you didn't have a driver's license. Point number three, 
you need to understand your ambitions and your targets. Just like how a business has a vision, objectives, and a mission statement, you too need to have a vision, objectives, and a mission statement. This is to help you kind of find yourself and discover what exactly you want to do. It's quite difficult in this day and age with all the information out there to really decide and know exactly what you want to do. So I believe that the best way is to try things out. Let me take an example. So let's say that I want to become a chef. So my vision is to become a chef. And my objectives is that I want to become a chef because I want to improve the culinary culture in my community or my country. Then my mission statement would be that I want to make sure that I take a short course in culinary arts um, within the next 12 months. So I will do that and I'll use that to drive me towards achieving that goal. I'll do that and then after that I'll obviously take some time to reflect and actually see whether I enjoyed it or not. Perhaps I did enjoy it but not completely. So then I review and then I, I change my vision, mission and objectives. And then maybe now it's that, yes, I still want to become a chef. That's still my vision. So my vision has not changed. Um, my objective, maybe now I really want to improve culinary arts. Perhaps I want to um, open up a restaurant that is open to you know teenagers. Perhaps that's the opportunity that I've seen. And then my mission will be that I'm going to engage with the local high school in my neighborhood and see what types of food that the teenagers they enjoy eating then the next step would be for me to do that action and to again review and review and review until i get to a point where i know more of what i want to do with clarity using this method can actually help you merge fields that you're interested in as well so let's take the last example that now i still want to become a chef and i want to open a restaurant for teenagers and i've gone to the local high school and found out what people like Perhaps I find out that a lot of teenagers eat a lot of leftovers for lunch, so they've never really explored new types of food. And maybe my friend had kind of launched me to do a coding course because coding is a thing to do nowadays. So now I can actually merge them and then have a new mission statement, vision and objectives. So my vision would be I want to become a chef and use technology in my desire to become a chef. My objectives would be I still want to open a restaurant for teenagers, but I want to make sure that it's a really smart restaurant and smart in the sense that it uses technology to provide solutions to these teenagers. Then my mission statement would be that I want to try code recipes for my restaurant that use common leftovers in households. So maybe I'll take a survey of these students, find out what common leftovers are, use that to create my first meals and attract the clients. Because they're kind of aware and familiar with the leftovers, it'll be a great way to get them to come through. Then after that, perhaps I can still go back to my old goal and improve culinary arts, introduce them to new types of foods. So managing your life like that by having a vision, objectives and a mission statement can help you narrow down into what you want to do. Whether it's for that season or for the rest of your life, it's still a good exercise to implement. Point number four, you need to keep track of your timesheet. Some businesses still use the timesheet method today, where you clock in when you arrive and you clock out when you leave. This type of thinking is still useful to use in your personal life as it will make you understand your time management skills and where your time is going. At times you may have tasks that you want to complete but you're unable to get to them because maybe time runs away with you or other tasks come up that need your immediate attention and that's completely fine. But understanding those demands and how you react to them in terms of your time management is very useful. So sometimes you may think that a task will take you one hour and it ends up taking you three hours. That is not really a reflection on your ability to do the task, but it just shows that you just need to manage your time differently. So allocate that rightful three hours to that task instead of trying to rush it in an hour because you've understood now that that type of task takes you three hours to do. Understanding your time management is also useful in order for you to make time for external things. So sometimes there might be tasks that appear and they need your immediate attention. Understanding how to structure your day and how your time works will help you make way for that again without putting a lot of pressure on you. Clocking your timesheet doesn't have to be a forever thing. You can do it over a week, over a month, or whenever your schedule changes just so that you understand how your time works and you manage it from there. With this practice, you don't need to do it often, but I would suggest that you do do it, especially when things change in your life, in order for you to understand how to best use your time. Point number five, rate and review yourself. The process of rating and reviewing yourself doesn't have to be after a long period of time. Neither does it have to be a harsh period. It can be a period where you just sit down and reflect with yourself on how you're doing. 
how are you doing in terms of your achievements and also how are you doing in terms of your going concern your health businesses need to make sure that they remain going concerns in order for them to be sustainable in the future and in the same way you need to do that too make sure you're checking your mental health your emotional health your physical health as well if you're unable to get out of bed because you're too tired maybe you're burnt out or you're not feeling so well make sure that you take care of yourself and you actually take some time out to recover another way to rate and review yourself is perhaps by just sitting with yourself and understanding how the previous period either the previous day or the previous hour went this will help you understand how you are showing up in certain spaces perhaps you are not giving someone a chance to contribute or perhaps you are not contributing yourself sitting down after that period and understanding why that happened will help you adjust accordingly in the future and adjust according to how you want to present yourself point number six and my personal favorite reward yourself Businesses reward their employees by offering them bonus packages and even Christmas parties at the end of a hard working period. In the same light, you should be doing the same for yourself. Make sure that you reward yourself and appreciate yourself. Acknowledge the hard work that you've been doing. Acknowledge all the things that you've gone through. Acknowledge your victories and even acknowledge things that you wish to improve upon because it means that you are willing and committed to improve upon them. Make sure that you do things that you truly enjoy. And if you wish to invite other people, do so. Do anything that makes you happy and anything that makes sure that you remain a going concern. Because in order for a business to thrive, its people must thrive. I would love to hear how you are managing your life. Whether you're going to take some of these points and implement them in your life, or even if you have additional points to add, please make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe to Hilo Starts Up. I'll see you next time.